The entrance and unfolding of your words give light. Their unfolding gives understanding, discernment and comprehension to the simple. Fire City Chapel, Word, Worship, Wonders of God. Allow me, sisters and brothers, to introduce the presence of God to you. The place where it is the refinery of the Spirit. The place where He refines and confines you for a time and releases you to the uttermost parts of the world. That when He blesses you, the whole world will know that of a truth, He is the great God. Not like Him. None beside him, none before him, none above him, everyone beneath him. Can you say, show me your glory? You see, when we look at outer space or we look at inner space, there is no space that carries enough power apart from his presence. I said in his presence, something will change. I cannot change anywhere else. I pray for you that you will desire his presence. I pray for you that nothing can pull you away from his presence. I pray for you that nothing will make you confused about his presence. Can you say his presence? The civilizations of heaven were crafted and enacted by spirits without bodies. So that beings like you and I with bodies can learn and articulate carefully the orchestrations and intentions of divinity on the earth. That is why we study the protocols of his environment it is the protocols of his presence in his presence i said that is why we idolize him that is why we shower him with endearments that is why we shower him with allurements that is why we worship him with cajolments that is why we worship him with compliments he is the same yesterday today and forever can you lift your hands and say show me your glory i pray for you I pray for you that this month you will learn the protocols of his presence that this month God will begin to expose in your spirit he will begin to expostulate the tenets of his presence to you that you will know what to do when you get to the first court you will know what is demanded of you when you enter the second court you will know what is demanded of you when you enter the most holy place you will know what is demanded of you and you will think that I'm talking about the tabernacle in the Bible can you say, show me your glory? Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to be captured in glory in a sermon series titled, In His Presence, with your host, the Bishop, Dr. Charles C. Hackman. God richly bless you. Captured in glory. So I'm talking to you about the essence of His presence. The whole month I'll be talking about in His presence. Say that with me, in His presence. In his presence. Um, as my custom is, I'll read two scriptures um, one from the Old Testament, one from the New Testament. Um, my Old Testament scripture would be Isaiah chapter number 6, from verse 1 to 8. Isaiah chapter number 6, 1 to 8. And then my New Testament scripture would be Jude chapter number 1, verse 24 and 25. Jude chapter number 1, 24 and 25. I'm, I'm going to talk about one of the subjects I love most, his presence. Um, there's nothing like talking about your lover, absolutely nothing. I mean, you can go to town with it. Uh, ask somebody by you, are you ready? Are you ready? Those online, if you are there alone, ask yourself, am I ready? <laughs> Spirit of God. Isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1 to 8. It says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Verse 2 says, Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain, he covered his face. That means with two, he covered his face. And um, with two, he covered his feet. With two, he did fly. 
And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is a Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Verse 4, And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Verse 5, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, verse 6, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'll try and do the first two verses today, but notice this um, verse. Um, the seraphim was not able to take the coal with his hand. That is how hot the coal, and the hotness is not temperature. Presence. Because it doesn't make sense that an angel will need tongues to pick a coal of fire from the altar. Really, like it will burn him. And he laid it upon my mouth, verse 7, and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Verse 8, um, the last verse for me. Also, I heard a voice of the Lord saying, Because you have learned the protocols of my presence, I can now send you. And if I will send you, I can send my blessings to go with you. Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? We are a lot. Not who will go for me. Who will go for us? So whoever is going to be sent must have the capacity for us. Right? Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. That is the hope we have that every fire citizen can say, Here I am. Send me. You can send me. All right. Hallelujah. Let me do my New Testament scripture. Um, Jude chapter number 1, 24 and 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless, faultless in spite of your fault, he has the ability to present you faultless, but it is before the presence and I told you there's a difference of his glory with exceeding joy. 25 says, to the only wise God, our Savior. My goodness, my goodness. Be glory and majesty and dominion and power. Both now, 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 now as you sit hearing me now. No matter the situation, both now, the only wise God will take glory for himself. He will take majesty for himself. He will take dominion for himself. He will take power for himself. Now, now, can you say now? I said it's happening. It's happening. Both now and ever. Amen. Thank you, family. May be seated. Let's do some work. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Can you say, show me your glory? Previously on Captured in Glory. Captured in Glory. When you hear presence, the word there is face. Because when God first talked about his presence, he wanted... To live face to face yes, sir. Yes, sir. with man yes, sir. so that you will not be confused what God is thinking about you.
so that you will not have any doubt the plans God has for you. Now, it's important I bring this because um, when you understand the presence has to do with a face-to-face encounter. It is not an assumption. It's not something you assume. A face-to-face encounter. Now, the presence being the face means that this month when we keep talking and dissecting the presence, which actually has a major role to play in us receiving the blessing that God has. It means that we are going to be drawn every Sunday. We are going to be drawn closer and closer and closer until we are face to face with the maker and creator of the heaven and the earth. We we need to reverence him. It is important that we let him know that we venerate him. We accomplish in his presence. We go up in his presence. He is the God on his left and on his right. There is none other. He is God all by himself. Not that he is in a class of his own. He owns the class and he gives admission to other people who wants to join the class. Can you say, show me your glory? Your God is God all by himself. I need to let you know that your situation has deceived you about your God. Your condition has deceived you about your God. I am sent as a voice of one sent by God to come and tell you that your God is not like your situation. He is God all by himself. If you allow me, can can, can I do it like this for a while? Uh, He is the God that when we get into his presence, all you see is the beauty of holiness. The beauty of holiness. That is why when we encounter him, we say that he is splendiferous. He is marvelous. He is gorgeous. He is the God we are talking about. Do you know I'm talking about your God? He is the God that we say is marvelous. A gorgeous God. A God that is stupendous. A God that is tremendous. A God that is prodigious. A God that is glorious. That is why we say lift your hands and say show me your glory. Your God is epic. Your God is magnific. Your God is terrific. We say he's the God that is majestic. He is the God that is Homeric. Can you say show me your glory? And this month you will get into his presence. And in obedience, in obedience, you will worship the King of Kings. He is the God among all gods. He is the Lord of all lords. No one like him. No one beside him. No one beside him. Everybody is beneath him. Do you know I'm talking about my father? I'm talking about your father. Can you lift your hands and say, show me your glory. You see, there is nothing you go through that will shut the eyes of God on you. I'll tell you, he's seen you. He knows you. He knows what you go through. He hears you when you call and he will respond. It is a matter of time. I said it's a matter of time. Can you fist bump somebody and say, it's happening, it's happening. In his presence, it's happening. Images cannot be divorced from the presence. I declare over your life, you will not be separated from his presence. I said you will not be separated from his presence. Receive his presence. Receive his presence. Receive his presence. When we say, I need you, oh, I need you, it's because we know we are the image. He is the object. We are the subject. And we submit ourselves to him so that we can be what he made us to be. Can you lift your hands and say, show me your glory. Because God created you and I in his presence, the only time you can see the best version of yourself. I I wanted to solve a problem. The problem is that you wonder why some things are some way in your life. You are not spending enough time in his presence. Here you 
while when you come before him alone you are watching your time 10 minutes 15 minutes you are in a hurry to go some the people you spend time in their presence they can do nothing for you you must come back to your first love some of you it was not your first love so just come back come back come back fist bump somebody and say come back come back tell the person the old man says come back the old man says the best version of your beauty is not in bottles of cosmetology it is in the protocols of his presence can you say in his presence can you say in his presence this month a determination in your spirit is that every day will bring you closer every afternoon will bring you closer every evening will bring you closer because as you come closer to him he will manifest who you are supposed to be can you say show me your glory today's message Captured glory presence means face it's a face to face thing you cannot be a better husband outside the presence you cannot be a better wife outside the presence you cannot be a better pastor outside the presence you cannot be a better leader outside the presence you cannot be a better businessman outside the presence the problems in business will cripple your mind if you do it on your own but there is a place in his presence there is a place right by him in the clouds of the rock that when he hides you there and he covers you with his hands all good things will happen for you when they say it will happen in his presence it begins to turn around when the economy will not move forward in his presence i said with two wings we begin to fly i'm not there yet i'm not there yet but you are unlimited in his presence you are uninhibited in his presence you cannot be stopped in his presence i can be the best visionary only in his presence I can be the best entrepreneur only in his presence there are things you can learn from school ask those who taught you in the school whether it has helped them allow me sisters and brothers to introduce the presence of God to you the place where it is the refinery of the spirit the place where he refines and confines you for a time and releases you to the uttermost parts of the world that when he blesses you the whole world will know that of a truth he is the great God none like him none besides him none before him none above him everyone beneath him can you say show me your glory in his presence one of the things i've been praying for you is that this month god will cause a hunger for his presence you will hunger for his presence the thing that will make you pray and pray aright the thing that will make you know what to do in his presence here is the presence of god that is manifested now if you don't learn the protocols of God according to the civilizations of heaven you will walk on earth and think that God is a man so you relate with him like you relate with a man all you know is that God is not a man that he should lie lying is just one attribute of men and there are other attributes <laughs> the concept sisters and brothers is that God is not a man the civilizations of heaven were crafted and enacted by spirits without bodies so that beings like you and I with bodies can learn and articulate carefully 
the orchestrations and intentions of divinity on the earth. That is why we study the protocols of his environment. It is the protocols of his presence. In his presence. So that you don't do things you shouldn't do. Many of us have seen and read in the news certain people that went before the Queen of England and disgraced themselves. Because they didn't know the protocols. They have lived with other men. I pray for you. I pray for you that this month you will learn the protocols of his presence. That this month God will begin to expose in your spirit. He will begin to expostulate the tenets of his presence to you. That you will know what to do. When you enter the first court, you will know what is demanded of you. When you enter the second court, you will know what is demanded of you. When you enter the most holy place, you will know what is demanded of you. And you will think that I'm talking about the tabernacle in the Bible. Can you say, show me your glory? We need to understand the variegated ways that the presence manifests. Allow me, if, if, you, if you will, um, to, to walk you through um, a, a condominium of things that will make you understand that you need to progress. You go to school to learn business. You go to school to learn archaeology. You go to school to learn economics. You must go to school to learn his presence. Because he is bigger. He said he is epic. It blew my mind when he said that. He said he is majestic. He is magnific. He is Homeric. That is the God we serve. You cannot compare him with the things you think you are comparing him with. Because even in the midst of comparisons, he is the only superlative. Without any comparative, he is the only, can you say, in his presence. We want to look at the essence of his presence. What are the protocols of his presence? How does he manifest his presence? And there are some things he does that makes you um, his presence. Because you have a certain formulated mindset about how the presence should come. The Bible talks about Moses. Uh, Moses is in the wilderness and the Bible says God sent him. And when he sent him, Moses' problem of God was that if I go and they ask me that who sent me, what should I say? It's, it's going to be heavy, but you can take it. When he was going, God gave him a rod. His question was, if I go, and they ask, who sent me? What should I say? You know the response. He said, say that I am has sent you. Because of that, he gave him a rod. Listen, you need to revelate and interpret well. He says, I am. And he gave him a rod. So for the first part of the journey, God is the rod. If you don't learn that protocol, what is going to happen is that you will think that the rod is useless. And you will use it anyhow. For some of us, on this side of the journey, you know the journey is two sides. We'll talk about the second side. But on this side of the journey, the rod is our work in the house of God. Why is it that we all forget that when Moses asked him, who should I say has said? He said, I am. It means he can be anything. So you, if he becomes this house of God, you cannot come in here and not understand the presence. You will come with problems and go with problems. Even though he is well able to save you and to heal you, 
but you don't understand the protocols of his presence he went before pharaoh and he put the stick down and that stick became another i am his presence so it means every time let me use you as a stick it means every time moses is walking he is in his presence so if this man comes to attack moses he has not just attacked moses he has attacked the presence of god all moses has to do is not to fear moses doesn't have to doubt moses just has to call on the presence of god that show me your glory and he's saying it knowing that he has the presence and so once that happens the presence goes to work but if moses doesn't know when he is attacked he will throw away the, the stick it's the presence in his presence by the end of today my my hope is that you will begin to identify what it is that is his presence in your life some of you it is your wives your wives that is his presence because if you don't understand the essence of his presence you would abuse your wife and you don't understand why you are struggling in life i just solved your problem pay your come and bring your time for some of you watching online and um, the reason for his essence the essence of his presence in your life is your boss at work i'm not saying for those on ground it's not but you are face to face your boss at work and if you don't do what you are supposed to do it affects every part of your life but good news which is supposed to be bad news is that you won't connect it that is because of your unfaithfulness to your work man of god the reason i'm saying this is because god said he will first bless the work of your hands it means anyone that employs you stands seen as a god yes sir oh my goodness yes sir but you don't understand yes, sir. the protocols of his presence and so you abuse it it is a stick it will be heavy just say yes just say yes at 92 i don't need people's response to preach but just say yes uh -huh, that's all he is in the presence of pharaoh and he has to prove his god and what he does is to put the stick down and you know the story when he puts it down it turns into another i am because man was made in the image of god other men can also put sticks down and it will be snakes it is part of the plan look at somebody say it's part of the plan but that is what god has scheduled so that when they have done it we will know who has the presence okay, okay, okay. we will know really who is on god's side we will know the object and the subject so they all put their rod on the floor and it becomes snakes and the bible says that moses' snake does not argue, it does it did not argue with the other snakes it swallowed all the other snakes now i look at the kingdom of darkness and i get amazed now they don't have wisdom the magicians were more than seven so when moses's rod is swallowing the first one six of them have an opportunity you see god will confuse those who compete with you i said god will confuse those who compete with you in his presence there is a covering coming over you that god will set you apart you will be distinguished you will be different you will stand aside God will lift you as said with two wings you will begin to fly I'm not there yet but you will fly you will fly I prophesy over fire sea chapel you will begin to fly in the name of Jesus lift your hands and say show me your glory sometimes our problem 
It's when God allows the other people to have their rods also turn into snakes. Then we don't know what to do. Because you don't really know the presence. That is why this month, you and I have a date every Sunday. Don't come late like you came this morning. That was so disrespectful. But you are forgiven. You see, God is doing something. His presence is not casual. The fact that God loves us doesn't mean he will give us his presence for cheap. You see, there is a reason why some people have success without toil. And some people will have success with toil. And both of them are of God. In his presence. When Moses wants to do anything, he lifts up the rod of God. This is the same rod he was taking care of sheep with. When he stayed in his presence, in the white fire covenant, the rod changed. The I am, he can take on anything. I said he can take on anything. For some of you, he's going to be the food you eat from here. And that sickness in your body will leave your body. Can you say, show me your glory? For some of you, when you take that drink, you take that food, wisdom will come into your spirit. Someday you have been seeking God for it, it will just drop into your spirit. Can you say, show me your glory? For some of you, some favor will open. Something that God has scheduled for you but has been hindered for a long time is going to be released right now. Can you lift your hands and say, show me your glory? Is it good? Can, can I move it a bit? The Bible says that God came to Moses again and told him, that built me an ark. Why? He says, so that I might dwell. All of a sudden, the presence is migrated from a stick. Because from the very time the ark is built, you won't see Moses use a stick again. If you don't study the presence, you will stay on the original old paradigm manifestation of that person. When the person shifts, you cannot prosper. Because you will still relate per the tenets of the old relationship. And you will miss it. Oh, can you say yes? When the ark is built, the Bible says, every time the Israelites are going to battle, they carry the ark and you know they'll win. Anytime an enemy comes, they only have to go and pick the ark. The presence would work. Until such a time when the I am who began as a rod and moved into an ark shifted into a tabernacle and he will shift again from there. Now if you don't study the protocols of his presence, you will miss it. The Bible says that the Israelites were in the wilderness and they had misbehaved against God. And so God sent serpents to bite them and kill them. This one, you can't fast and pray. <laughs> oh God, I guess what I'm trying to say is that sometimes we set ourselves as enemies of God. And we don't know the presence will solve it. Because you don't know what you do. The things you do that contaminate your covenants. The things you do that cancels out your, your, your thing with your maker. But when you go into his presence, as you worship, as you pray, as you study, spending quality time and quantity time with him, the presence changes everything. This is what the Bible says. God told Moses that with these people who are dying and all that, here is how we would heal them. The same thing that is afflicting them. Mold it 
unto a pool and tell them that anyone that can come close to be able to look upon it the same thing that out of the presence is destroying you he says if you can come into his presence he can make that same thing turn around for your good that is why we say that where others go down we will go up where others die we will live where others are sad and they cry we would rejoice because it's the same thing god will not change the economy but he will change your economy because you see if god changes the economy other people who don't belong to god will benefit he will not change the economy he will change your economy The Bible says three Hebrew boys were taken in their prime as captives into Babylon. They served God, they honored God, they respected God, they venerated God, they celebrated God. And yet God allowed them to go into captivity. When they went into captivity, the Bible said that they were chosen, handpicked, so that they would serve the king. All the others who told to the demands of the king. Um, but these three and Daniel decided that they would not defile themselves. The next thing is that if you defile yourself, you cannot be a carrier of his presence. You cannot be a container of glory. Because the I am shifted to become a person. Three guys became the manifestation of the presence. So much so that when they were put into fire, my goodness. Ha, hey. yes, sir. they were put into fire, and the fire didn't have power over them. The Bible says, rather, the fire was an invitation for the presence. I'm trying to tell you that the world is not going to get better. But you will get better. I said things are not going to get better. But you will get better. In his presence. There is something that brings the presence. So that if you don't defile yourself. You don't contaminate yourself. Then whatever situation you are put in. The presence shows up. And when the presence shows up. Every natural law is conquered. Businesses that should take eight years can take eight days. Can you say in his presence? In his presence. We, we are learning the essence of his presence so that my coming to church will not be routinic. My relationship with him will not be platonic. It will not be something that is static, but it should move on from glory to glory. Can I move it a bit? With these several manifestations, all I intend to achieve is to tell you that the I am can be anything. So the presence of God can be anything. Um, just one more step. Let me move it one more step. We have the omnipresence of God. It means God is everywhere. Uh, he doesn't bless everywhere. The omnipresence of God simply means his eyes move to and fro everywhere. The fact that he sees does not mean he blesses. But there are other people that he watches over them. To perform his word concerning their lives because they have studied the protocols of his environment, the tenets of his presence, they have the essence of his presence, they have studied it so they know how to work it. John chapter number four Jesus is sitting on a whale, and a woman comes to him, and Jesus said, Give me to drink. 
I'm not there yet. But you cannot benefit from the presence if you don't give. All Jesus wanted to do was to expose to that woman the tenets of the presence. But he had to set the ball rolling. If you don't give, it will not work. All you are looking for is to receive. No, no, no. The blessing is for those who blessed are those who give. So Jesus as here for a, a cup of water and the Bible says um, the woman looked at Jesus scrutinized and analyzed him, and then said but you are a Jew now um, why would you ask me for water then Jesus said um, if you know who it is there are people who worship but they don't know The reason this class is so vital is that you go to school for a certificate but you have to write an exam do you know you don't register you don't join any school because of an exam you join because of the certificate but you will not get the certificate until you have written the exam the certificate is the glory the exam is the presence if you don't qualify in handling the presence you cannot get the blessing what we call the glory it is not going to happen that is why this class is so important look at the irony of it the woman was right in the presence of god el Gibo himself and he was asking him that um, our father said the presence is here you people say the presence is in Jerusalem. Why is it? Jesus said, none of the above. No, you are in. Oh, did you miss it? You are in his presence. And you are still asking for his presence because you have not studied. You have not studied the presence. So right in his presence, you are asking. You see, I pray that this month, when the presence shows up in your car you will not miss it i pray that this man if the presence shows up at work you will not miss it i pray that if the presence shows up in the kitchen you will not miss it if the presence shows up whilst you are lying with your wife in bed you will not miss it if the presence shows up when you are in school you will not miss it wherever the presence will show up i pray for you that you will not miss it can you say show me your glory this has been Captured in Glory with your host, the Bishop, Dr. Charles C. Hackman. God richly bless you. Captured in Glory.